to God be all the glory and honor for the great things he has done and continues to do. Uh, today's message is going to be uh, a follow-up, I guess, maybe, of the message that I preached on last Sunday for Pastor Lloyd Petty's anniversary. Uh, many of you may not have gotten to hear that, and so I'm bringing it back by popular demand. I like it. Amen. 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 And so I am going to uh, bring that message to you, uh, to you on today in prayer that something will be said or done that will allow you to benefit and understand why the importance of stay of execution. My scripture text is coming from Esther chapter 8 verses 1 through Eight. That's Esther chapter 8 verses 1 through 8. My focal verse will be verse 6 and it reads thusly. <clears throat> On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews enemy unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king for Esther had told what he was unto what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite. Yeah. And his device that and his device that he had devised against the Jews. This is the King, uh, King James Version. Then, then the king held out the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, it is, it, if it pleased the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the king seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letter, letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamathatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure, and this is verse 6, for how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Azurus said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also the Jews as it like of you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in kings in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may, may no man reverse. Amen, amen. To God be all the glory. We understand the story of Esther whereby she was an orphan and her uncle Mordecai uh, was taken care of, became her caregiver. And the Jews at that time had been in captivity and, uh, and, and Haman was determined to have them all killed, have them slaughtered. And uh, Esther, who also was a Jew, she had found favor. God had created her for such a time as that, that when Queen Vashti did not want to please the king. He said, okay, I'm going to send her back, paraphrasing, and let's bring in some of her handmaidens. And Esther was one of the handmaidens, and she was beautiful. She was fair. She had all the likings of any man that he would want in a woman. And so one of the things with the king, if you were to if he put his scepter out there 
and you touched it. If he did not kill you, then that was a good thing. And so Esther had favor with the king. And so that opened up the ability for her to be the one while the people were uh, at hand of being executed, she was able to save the people. And so hence the message title, The Stay of Execution. Now, when I preached this message on last week, it was at the anniversary of Pastor Lloyd Petty, because when I was talking to him uh, prior to, to preaching, well, knowing that I was going to preach for him, he I began to ask him different things about his 28, 29 years of preaching. And one of the things that he said to me, which caught my eye, was that every time he goes before the people, he feels as if he's preaching a stay of execution. He feels that as he's talking to the people, giving them the word of God, he's hoping that the people will be saved by the word of the Lord, that they would come to a saving grace of Christ Jesus whereby being saved from any execution. Of course, we're going to die here on the face of this earth. But one day, we pray that when our time has expired here, that we wake up. We wake up with our eyes stayed on Christ Jesus. And even here today, when we think about a stay of execution, we have people that are in jail, people that have done things, people that have gotten themselves in trouble, and you have people such as Pastor Petty and others and pastors and governors and all these people, family members, will plead the case of an individual, of a loved one, because they don't want to see their loved one put to death. Mm -hmm. Because while mm -hmm. we, we live here, we die one day and we go to heaven, we go hopefully to heaven, we are in a position where every day somewhere, somehow, and especially given we have YouTube and all those things now, there's a word that you can get for yourself and or just by reading the Bible on your own. We are able to get the word of God and know that this life here is going to be filled with trouble. We just finished reading that. But when we leave here, troubles will cease. There will be uh, just joy and praising of our Lord and Savior. But here, we're going to go through some things. We're going to go through things whereby sometimes our voice won't be enough. Sometimes we're going to need other people to speak on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And so every time a pastor, a preacher, a leader, whoever it is that's talking to the people, comes before the people to speak the words of the Lord, they are, in essence, given an opportunity to stay the execution. What we'll stay the execution? For right now, it could be to stay the execution that you would have life and life everlasting through being saved. So many people don't understand that there is no purgatory. There is uh, no someone else is going to die and they're going to be able to take care of your sin. No, we all are responsible for accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. As today is, we've just gone through the general confession. Uh, Jesus went to the cross. So he stayed the execution for all of us. He gave us an opportunity to be saved, to be set free. He opened up the door. If you ever look at the picture on uh, sometimes uh, calendars or uh, fans, you'll see a door. And, and the picture of it's supposed to be Jesus standing there. But if you notice that the door does not have a knob on the other side, that's because Jesus is a free will God. He opens the door, but we have to choose to come in. So while he stayed the execution, he has given us the opportunity to be saved and have eternal life with him. We have to make that decision. And so if we don't make that decision, then when we close our eyes for the last time, we're going to hell. It's as simple as that. There ain't no... There ain't going to be no second chance. This is our second chance right now. And so every time 
we hear the word of God, we're getting the opportunity of a stay of execution. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? We have the opportunity, amen. We have the opportunity to make a choice. If we're going to do wrong, all right. We're going to do what the scriptures have taught us, or we're not. It's a free choice. God has opened up the door to pay our sin debt in full. We don't have to worry about paying our own debt. We could never do it anyway. But all we have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God. When Amen. we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then we have entry into the kingdom. We are now heirs of the kingdom. But likewise, being heirs of the kingdom, while we're on the face of this earth, we're going to suffer some trials. Again, we talked about that in our declaration. We're going to go through some things in life. And some of those things are not going to be too fair. They're not going to be all uh, a bed of roses or um, uh, ice cream with a cherry on top. We're going to go through things whereby, again, we're going to have family members and loved ones sometimes that are going to have to plead our case uh, from the perspective of people that may end up in jail, people that may end up on death row. They are just marking off the days as they go by. Because a set time has been made for them to go to, uh, there was a police uh, in the, uh, the pastor's brother uh, is a D.C. policeman. So he told me that they don't do the gas chamber, it's just a lethal injection now. So you're going to either get the lethal injection or you have a heart attack before they get a chance to do it. But they're going to put you to death. And so your family members and loved ones are pleading your case. And what we have to do, what God expects us to do, is once we have heard the word, then we have to, if somebody is willing to go to bat on our behalf, if somebody is willing to go to the cross so that we don't have to worry about paying a debt that we cannot pay, or somebody is trying to, to fight for us to have another opportunity, what is our job? I'm glad you asked. Our job is to show how bad do we want it? Mm -hmm. How much do we appreciate it? In the case of Jesus Christ, all we have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what we read in the Declaration. When it comes down to folks that are having a plea for a stay of execution that are on death row, they have to be able to show the governor, show the warden, show all of these people people and certainly be praying at the same time that Lord if you give me just one more opportunity I promise you I'm going to do right but how many of us just take it lightly the idea that there is a hell there is a heaven and we're going to one or two places and we're not going to always have an opportunity to get it right so we have mm -hmm. to seize the moment right now to say Lord I am determined I got a made up mind I'm going to prove to you how bad I want it. I'm not going to let your labor be in vain mama I love you I, I'm glad you keep going up to that courthouse daddy I appreciate everything you're doing trying to convince that judge that I'm going to do right I'm going to show you that I'm going to do right you have to show these people just how bad you want there to be a stay of execution. Well, likewise for Jesus. Amen. God is only asking us just to believe. And if we believe God, that Jesus is the son of God, and that he went to that cross, that he died on behalf of our, our sin debt, a sin debt that we could not pay for ourselves, and that he rose from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God the Father, then we are saved. We have the right to the tree of life. Then that means that that we're going to do whatever we can to be pleasing unto God's sight. Does that mean we're going to get it right every day? Does it mean that everything we do is going to be perfect? No, it does not. Life is going to happen. That's why Jesus came, because it is impossible for us to live in this world and be sinless. Amen. Things are just going to happen. So we need grace. And when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we receive his grace for his grace is sufficient. But we won't know that we have that grace unless we read the word of God. 
and when we read the word of God, because the Bible tells us to renew our minds daily. By renewing our minds daily, we're going to begin to find out what are the precepts and the principles of having a sanctified life with Christ Jesus. One by where I'm going to go through some stuff. But at the end of the day, I know I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. At the end of the day, I know that it's going to be okay. If you ever heard my story at the end of the day, you know that instead of being in a 4 by 4 with a, a, a straight jacket on, hitting my head up against the padded walls, I'm here today to tell the story. Amen? Amen. Because why? The God that we serve, he has granted me a peace. And a peace that surpasses all understanding. And because he's a God that he has no respect to person, what he's done for one, he'll do for another. So that same God, while we're going to go through troubles, here's how I like to picture it. Trouble is all around us. It's all around us. It's everywhere. But God is holding us. And that trouble can't do no more than what God allows. Just as Job was. Job lost everything. Job said, okay, and I'm paraphrasing, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him because I know my God shall vindicate me. Amen. He knew because he had already witnessed and had relationship with God to know that God was not going to see him completely out. And we know the end of Job's story. He was given double for his trouble. Amen. And so when we look at our lives, there is nothing. Even as I look back on what this family has experienced and how we've been fighting to save this home, my childhood home, it has been my children, my baby boy, to come along and to save the day. Amen. It didn't happen by accident. It took me doing what God's word has declared I do and raise them up right, train them up right, teach them what it is to know and understand not just about life, but about money too, about a good credit, that life is going to happen. We have to band together. We have to come together. That is what's happening in the word of God. God's word is love, and it's teaching us the things that we need to know in order to stay the execution of this world because it's going to come. It's going to happen. Earlier today, I was speaking with someone, and I said, you know, we were just talking about some things, and she brought us something about, you know, I, I was telling someone about how, you know, they just got to learn not to worry about everything. You know, you know who you are. And I was thinking, man, I said, you know what? You talking to me, and you just don't even know it. Mm -hmm. I said, because I, I'm praying. I am praying so much that I can be, you know, it, it's easy for you to say a thing. I can easily say, you know, oh, you can say what you want to say. Just tell it to the hand because the ears ain't listening. You know, oh, it's just like water off a duck's back. I can say that. But this heart of mine is aching. And so I said, you know what? I have been asking God, God, give me what I need so that when the enemy rises up against me, especially when it's your family, that I can really not be hurt by. Because it hurts when those that you think are supposed to love you, when they, they turn against you or they you, you think. Because they say they're doing one thing, they're praying for you. But the reality of it is, is that their prayers are not for you, but against you. And when you know that to be so, because they're bold enough in their narcissism to say that that's what they're doing, it just hurts. And I said, you know, I know that God is still with me. I know that God is present with me. I know that God is keeping me because he keeps giving me victory. But I want to get to that place whereby I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that even when I hear something, that God will do something where maybe something is, maybe an airplane comes over and I don't even hear what they say. And so it doesn't affect me. I, I want something Amen. because it's a bad thing when you know that there's a group of people that is out to get you. That there's a group of people that while they say one thing, that there's a, 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 a song many years ago, smile in your face all the time, and they want, they want to take your place, they call backstabbers. Backstabbers, that's what they do. So you really can't trust those people, but who we can trust is God, because this is what my therapist said. She said, stop worrying about what you can change. 
She said, because what does God keep doing in your life? He keeps giving you victory. And as long as God is giving you victory, you don't have to worry about those that are trying to come up against you. Because here's the truth of the matter. When people are coming up against you, that's the enemy using them. And that means that you must have something that he wants to destroy. Mm -hmm. That must mean that you're headed in a direction that what? He has to kill and steal and destroy before you get there. So it's actually, it's crazy, but it's actually a good thing to have strife in your life, mm -hmm. to have situations in your life, because the enemy don't have to come after what he already has. So when we are having life come after us, when things are happening to us, then we can say, okay, God, thank you, because I know I must have something precious. But Father, I need you to keep me. And so then we find ourselves understanding his word when we talk about a stay of execution. What does that mean? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Amen. Every tongue that rises up against you, he will condemn. Amen. The stay of execution. God's got your back, your front, everything concerning you. He shall keep you to the day of redemption. Jesus has already gone to the cross on behalf of each one of us and all we have to do is show God how much we appreciate it. Pastor Brown preached this morning that church is not an option. Amen? It is not good enough to say, oh, I went to church on Mother's Day. Well, what about the Sunday before and the Sunday after? We grow together as kingdom people when we fellowship with one another. The scripture tells us forsake not the assembling of the saints because when we come together, we get to build one another up. We get to strengthen one another. We get to become family to one another. So when sister so-and-so's child gets in trouble, she doesn't have to worry about running all around to other people. She knows that she's got a safe place in her body of Christ where she can come to and the people are already praying for her child. Amen. Amen. We're mm -hmm. talking about the stay of execution. We're here and we understand that the word of God teaches us that everything that we need is in his word. Esther was born for such a time to stay the execution of the Jews. Amen. You and I were born for such a time to be able to preach the word of God, to let people know that we serve a living Savior and that no matter what happens here, God is able. God is more than able to keep us until the day of redemption. God is able that when the doctor says we'll only see the age of two, he's almost 20, what, 26, 27. I'm losing uh, the numbers now. I can't remember it all. But we, we're old enough to, to understand those things. When the baby stops talking, we know that God still has a voice for that child. That's what God will do. Amen. We are all witnesses to how God has stayed the execution on our behalf. But I'm going to give you a few people in the scriptures that also stayed the execution as we reflect on the idea that we know and understand that when somebody is speaking on your behalf, laying you before the cross or laying you before the governor, asking for another opportunity, it's not enough that we would just sit by idly, just waiting for things to happen. No, we have a role to play. And that role is that we begin to learn and understand the word of God so that as, as things are happening, we know how to call on the different scripture texts that will help us to get us through. Amen. When we look at what happened with Joseph, with Joseph we know that Joseph was his daddy's favorite. Amen. But his brothers did what? They threw him in a pit, right? Mm -hmm. they, 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 they got rid of him because they didn't like the idea that Joseph had this favor. Amen. But Joseph was going to one day stay the execution for them. When the famine came some decades later, after they had thrown him in the pit, and they go over to see if they can get food for themselves, and who did they run into? Their brother. 
the one that they had put in the pit and then sold to the people. Amen. He ended up becoming the one who would be the, the, the one to give them the food and everything that they needed for such a time as that. Amen. So he stayed in execution because the reality of where they were headed is that they were to die from hunger. Their own brother, they put him in a pit. But God was aware of that. And so, so often we get caught up because life is happening to us and nobody has told us that life is going to happen. We're going to fall. But the important thing is that the scripture tells us that we can get back up. We don't have to stay there. We have to just shake ourselves off and keep on going towards the thing that we have been called to do. Amen. Or that work towards the thing that we believe we have been called to do. Amen? Amen. And so here we are, uh, some witnesses that we can, uh, we can take from in this message text. Moses had a stammering tongue. And all God used him, regardless of that, God used him to get the people out of Egypt. Amen. He stayed the execution. Mm -hmm. The scripture text tells us that God said to Moses, the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more again forever. Amen. Amen. Here they were coming after him, but God allowed them to escape what was destined to be their life ended. And then he said, the Egyptians that you see today, you will see again no more forever. Amen. Will you accept freedom? Because every Sunday, there's an altar call that goes out. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, will you accept him today? And freedom has never been in man, but it's been in God. Amen? But Moses stayed the execution by following what God had called him to do, even though he had a stammering tongue. Now, Moses didn't believe that he could do it because why? He wasn't perfect. So let me, for all of those that have been called to do something concerning God's people, you don't have to be perfect. Because if you did, I certainly wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't be here. Flaws and all, oh, God will take you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Saul turned to Paul. His past didn't hinder God's plan for the people to be free. Even when he was put put in captivity, he was still fighting to stay the execution of the people. Amen. Paul from jail was writing letters to the church to help them out, to give them understanding, to stay the execution, to know and understand what God had for them. David and all of his sin didn't stop God's plan for the for for you and I to be saved. God even told us that he's a man after his own heart. Now, David did everything wrong. That's, if there was a wrong out there to do it, David did it. Amen. David was constantly in some sort of situation. Constantly in a situation that people would look on even today and say, oh, you did that? Oh, you had it straight for hell. But remember what I told you earlier, God's grace is sufficient. It is not our perfection that saves us. It's our acceptance that Jesus is Lord. And after we accept that, then we begin to sanctify ourselves, become set apart from the world to be more like Christ. And so then we're able to be as David was, a man after God's own heart. Why? Because when stuff happens, we don't try to take it and to deal with it on ourselves. We just go to God in spite of what it looks like. How bad it might look like, look like. Nobody has any place to put us in heaven or hell. That's God. He is the author and finisher of our faith. We all know Noah. Even though he was a drunk and people laughed at him, God used him and, uh, and whoever was willing to be saved was set free. They all got on the boat. Amen. The story goes like this. My mama would tell me when I was little, you know how Noah built the ark? And I would say, yeah. And she would say, how? And I start talking about how he put the pieces together. And she say, no, he was able to build the ark because he followed the instructions. So when we follow the instructions, what are the instructions? What are the instructions? The instructions is that we are to understand that we are set aside people. We are a holy people, a new generated people, a new generation, a people that if once we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, God restarts the clock. He says that I throw your sin into the 
the sea of forgetfulness to never re remember anymore. And he also does not punish us for those things. Now there is a consequence that we go through because if we don't have any consequences, we're going to do what? We're going to do it again. But Jesus throws it all into the sea of forgetfulness to remember it no more. So regardless to what was going on with Noah, God, because he was obedient to what God had called him to do, he was saved and all of those that followed him. Amen? So we have to know, when, who, do, who do we want to hang out with? You know, there may be this crowd that seems to be doing really, really good, and they might be the popular ones. But if they popular and headed straight to hell, I don't think you want to be with them. But if you're with some people that are going someplace, and then even more so, they want to even help you to get where God is taking you, that's the crowd you want to uh, be a part of. I say it all the time. I like when I heard Jasmine Skurlock say, you know, do like T-Mobile. Sometimes you have to just take your phone, scroll, select, and delete some people. Everybody can go where you're going. Amen? Amen. Get it. Gideon was used, even though he was afraid, Gideon was very afraid. He was scared. And, and to prove God was with him, God said, even though you had all of these men, over 3,000 men, God took him down to 300. Amen. He stayed the execution. So God, even though we might look, might not feel like we have everything it takes, we see that in the Bible, he used people like Paul, people like Moses, people like uh Gideon, he, all of the folks that, that are what? They, they're not what they think they should be in order to do the task that God would have them to do. But yet, those are the ordinary people that God uses every day to do extraordinary things in the lives of the living, in the lives to be, to pursue people, to cause people to want to be saved. Amen? So Gideon had to Take those people, those numbers down. He had to get rid of some of the men. But everybody can't go again where you're going. The woman at the well, in her adulterous lifestyle, she ran and told others about a man who has opened up the door to receive a stay of execution. She said, let me tell you about a man who told me about everything about myself. She was taking that word. What is she saying? What is this, this particular scripture text? How does it speak to you? If I give you something good, if I give you a way to, to, to be able to be better, to be made whole, you don't keep it to yourself. God causes us to evangelize. He chooses us to go out there and share the good news of Jesus. That's why the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Muslim, all those people, they do a much better job and witnesses on the behalf of a God that they got to save. Our God, we don't have, they can't even find a grave site for Jesus. All we have to do is believe. But folks like them, they go out and they do more for witnessing than the Christians will do. We ought to go out there and witness so that others may come to know who Christ is. So they too will be in a posture of having a state of execution for their lives. Amen. Because the reality of it is, is so much, so many of us, we think that we are so lost that there is no hope. But it's in that very, very lost place where God does more for you than you could have ever, ever imagined. So what say you when it comes down to a state of execution? Did Jesus go to the cross just for nothing? Did Jesus go to the cross on behalf of our sin debt that we would just take it for granted and never ever use our mouths to say, Lord, I receive you. I believe that you are Lord and Savior. Lord, I do trust and know that you are the Son of God. Lord, I believe that you sit at the right hand of God the Father. Or do we want to say, well, I'm not sure. So I'll just roll the dice. Well, some things I wouldn't play with. And my salvation is one of them. And here's my theory on it. You ain't got nothing to lose. There is nothing to lose in accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. There is a whole lot to lose if you roll the dice and you go the other way. Because once you have closed your eyes, once I have closed my eyes for that last time, there ain't no do-over. Whatever's going to happen, happens in that twinkling 
of an eye. That exact moment in time, wherever you're going to spend eternity, it's done. That's it. Ain't no raising your hand like you're in the classroom, teacher, teacher, can I have a do-over? Nope. It's done. So what we want to do in a place where Jesus has gone to the cross on our behalf is that we want to accept him as Lord and Savior. We want to accept him as the one who has, not only has he died for our sin debt and paid the price in full, but he's put people, pastors, preachers, and teachers, other leaders, other laity, other ministry, in our pathway that we would come to know who Christ Jesus is. And in doing so, it's up to us what we're going to do with it. If we decide that we don't want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, then when times get hard, don't be mad with the folks that tried to help you because we have to make the decision. One of the moments that opened up my eyes was I was at uh, this, this mall in, in Maryland called Iverson Mall. I was coming out of there, I don't know what I was in there for. But anyway, this, this lady, she was passing out these flyers about uh, a gospel program or something that was going to happen. And she handed it to me and I just started talking to her about my mama. And my mama is a pastor, and my mama this, and my mama that. And she was quick to say, you know you ain't getting into heaven on your mama's skirt tail. Wow. Wow. Okay. I ain't let her see me, you know. But I said, man. And it has stuck with me all of these 35 years plus because she was absolutely right. Regardless to how much my mama knew, regardless to how much my daddy knew, I had to make a choice for my life someday. What would that choice be? One thing that separates us from, as Christians from those that are in the world and who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We will be victorious. Yes, we're going to go through life. Life is going to happen. But the beauty of it all is that God's peace his word, his promises to us, following his precepts and uh, principles are going to guarantee us the promise of victory. So, for example, if life happens, everything may look like it's caving in on you, but you don't lose your mind. Because why? The peace that surpasses all understanding has given you a word that says, look at Job's life. He lost everything. But at the end, God gave him back more than he could have imagined. Mm -hmm. But what I like even more about Job, Job, in spite of, in spite of how he, what he went through, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But what else do we know about Job's story? When the enemy, well, let me, Job's story, the devil couldn't even do anything with him until he got permission. He had to get permission. So whatever happens to us, the enemy has to get permission. And when God grants the permission for the enemy to try you, what we have to do is then go back to the word of God and say, God, you said no weapon formed against me would prosper. Look at what I'm going through. And say, God, I'm giving this over to you. And God says, pass, because that's all he wanted you to do. Our arms are too hard, too, too short to fight with, with God and to do the things that we would need to do to, to settle our battles. God has already fought the battle for us. So when we learn the word of God, that's why we have to study to show ourselves approved, to know the words that we need when life comes at us fast. No insurance company, I don't care if it's State Farm, The Rock, all of these different things that they have. No, what we have to have is the assurance that God, our Father, is who he said he is. And he said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But any tongue that does rise up against us, he will condemn. There's nothing that we can do to do to condemn or take down what, what the enemy is trying to do. What the enemy wants to do is to steal our testimony. 
And so we have to stay faithful to God so that he knows that we, no matter what goes on, we're trusting you, God, that no matter what we deal with, that you're going to vindicate us. So we don't have to worry about what's going on around us. We don't have to worry about, oh, yeah, I don't have enough money for, for the bills. I, I was listening to Pastor Brown uh, preaching uh, this morning in, in the Merlin location and some of the other preachers that I was listening to this morning and everybody was talking about money and I said thank you God because that's the thing that I that's been on my mind because what what we fail to understand is that God does not need us anything that God desires of us is an act of obedience and when God requires of us to tithe it's to see if we're going to do the right thing what I know again as a witness is that when I work I tied more than what my gross was. When I didn't work, I got back more than what my gross was. So God is just looking to see, are you going to be obedient? Are you going to do what I've asked of you? Because when we are faithful to be obedient to the word of God, he certainly, he, God is bound. He has to do what he said he's going to do. Because the scripture says that he's a God that cannot lie. And so if he cannot lie, then stay in the execution doesn't just mean that the enemy, we're going to be saved from eternal damnation. It means that we can have heaven on earth right here. That there's nothing that's going to prevent us from having everything that we need to survive here on the face of the earth. Amen. So I pray today that we understand what it is to have a stay of execution. But more importantly, what does it mean? Does it mean that, oh, I got a stay of execution? I'm so happy. I don't have to worry about that no more. And can't wait to get home to watch the stories. Duh. Because if you don't do what you need to do to accept Jesus as Lord, to recognize what you have been through, do you know what's going to happen? If you have not been delivered, or whatever put you in a situation to need a stay of execution, you will get back there again. And the next time, you might not be so lucky to get a stay of execution because they're going to go back and they're going to say, wait a minute, on January 1st, so-and-so was released. But on March 1st, he was sent back in. She had to go back. Not even a couple of months they were out there doing the same thing again. Well, this time, they're going to die for sure. And they put them right back there in that stay of execution. Now, Jesus doesn't work that way. Once you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you're saved. Now, what you do to be sanctified and receive everything that God has for us as part of kingdom living, because the Bible tells us that we can have heaven on earth. And that's how we have to have our mindset, have an expectancy of having heaven on earth. But if you and I stay just right around in here, because this is our sweet spot, that comfortable place for us, then nothing more and nothing less is going to happen for us. So what we want to do with life is all on us. There was a song many years ago, life is what you make it. But we have to make up our mind that just as what Esther did in the story of Esther, she ran the risk as a Jew to save the people. And she even said at one point in the scriptures, if I perish, let me perish. But she's going on in because she was created for such a time as that. And because God had created her to do that, then God's name was on the line to protect her. The same with us today. God allowed us to be here in this time frame. God is the one that has allowed us to be here for whatever the purpose may be. It's up to us to seek the face of God to know why we're here and, and, and continue to seek his face until we find out exactly what his plan is on how to use us. And, and, and that's another message. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, the stay of execution. Seize the moment. The moment in time that we all have the opportunity to make a, a decision for life and not death. God came that we would not just have life, but life more abundantly. 
And so today we can make that decision. That decision comes with accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. For those that may have backslidden, that just comes with repenting and knowing that Jesus is Lord. And because he is Lord, he is faithful to forgive you and I and, and give us the ability to get right with him. And then we have to determine in our minds that we're going to stay right with the Lord so we can continue to move forward in the things that God has called us to do. Amen. For those that have come on, I appreciate you spending this time with us. Certainly you are saved, uh, I believe, because I, I don't know what the weather is like in Maryland, but he is pretty nice. And well, I don't know what time it is, but I know it's about maybe four o'clock might be getting close to at this point in time. You're watching me, then you must have some desire for Christ Jesus. We thank you for spending this time with Run and Shout in uh, the state of North Carolina, in the city of Fayetteville. We pray that if you're ever in the area, that you would come around. Three o'clock is the service time. Be a part of what we're doing here. And in Maryland, the service starts at 11 o'clock every Sunday at the Bowie Town Center, Shopping Center, the Safeway there by the Florida Department. Amen. It's 4101. North View Drive. Amen. Go to our website for those that have been feeding and uh, giving tithe and offering to us. We appreciate it. Go to our website and you can see all the great things that you're doing. We've already begun feeding and taking care of those here in our schools in North Carolina, but you will be able to see those things. It's Run and Shout Ministries, the number one dot org. Amen. God bless you. We pray to experience you this time next week. And uh, until then, stay safe. Amen.